Hey guys, it's Sam. Today we're going to start a short video series called Astigmatism Made Easy. I recently received a comment on one of the videos I did covering the 10 types of astigmatism in that they wish there were more examples on it. And, and to be honest, it was a really um, short video for a lot of information that was just kind of condensed into it. So this will be a time for us to kind of um, evaluate some different points in that video, but on a, on a slower level and just kind of breaking it down a little better. So first off, what is astigmatism? Astigmatism is when light does not come to a singular point focus on the retina, right? We want light to generally focus on the, the macula and the fovea centralis of the retina. That's, that's the point on the light sensitive tissue of the eye that receives the light image, right? So um, it has all the uh, cone photoreceptors photoreceptor cells on it that have our uh, clear central vision, our color vision, right? So with astigmatism, light doesn't come to a singular point focus, it comes to a linear focus. So the light is kind of, it's spread out, it's not to that a singular sharp point. Um, and we illustrate this with a lot of times the oversimplification of a football image. And I, I want to show that because it is a great illustration. So this is a football, we'll put the laces on there just for, for the fun of it, and, and you know, and we're going to compare that to a, a soccer ball or basketball or whatever. Uh, so with a, with a round spherical shape like a soccer ball, if you can imagine, this um, radius is going to be the same curve as this radius. They're going to be the same steepness, right? So from there to there, it's going to be the same pattern. And you, you could do that all throughout, right? So that is the same, that line is going to be the same steepness as this line here. That's if your eye was perfectly spherical and you did not have astigmatism. It doesn't mean you don't have a refractive error, right? Because your eye could be too long like a myope or too short like a hyperope, but it could still mean that light's coming to one singular point. Astigmatism means more like a football, that this meridian, right, our vertical 90, you know, might be steeper. And if you can imagine this curve on a football, it's, it's much less drastic, it's flatter, right? So a football laying like this is a good example of with the rule of stigmatism. Just something to remember, your vertical meridian is steeper. So it'd be like the cornea is steeper in the vertical meridian. But this is astigmatism. Light is entering at different uh, steepnesses, you know, a flattest point and a steepest point, and it's, it's causing that light to enter and, and fall upon the retina in a linear fashion instead of that point that we really want. So if that's what astigmatism is, then we also need to define, you know, the anatomy of the eye that can cause astigmatism or yeah, so like, what are the refractive medium of the eye? What are the parts of the eye that are creating astigmatism? Well, to refract means to bend, right? So we're talking about bending light. So if the cornea was completely spherical, like our soccer ball, right? No matter how light entered it, it would enter at the same radius of curvature and it would provide the same refraction, same refractive properties. But then we have the, if this is the anterior view of the eye coming through, then you have the crystalline lens, which is behind it, kind of suspended um, in the anterior chamber of the eye. That's another lens of the eye, and it too can have toricity, which is, you know, and create astigmatism. Much more common on the cornea, but you can find it on the crystalline lens. So the cornea supplies roughly 43 diopters of strength. That's plus 43. It's a plus power lens. You know, and, and just to take a step back of how amazing it is that the cornea is like half a millimeter thick in the center um, and it's supplying 43 diopters of strength. And the crystalline lens supplies on average about plus 17 diopters. And that gives us our 60 diopters of strength. But either one of those surfaces can be toric, right? Can have a cylindrical component on it, which is gonna make light enter it dif differently. So the big question is, you know, how do we measure astigmatism? Well, the main instrument that's used to measure astigmatism is the keratometer. The keratometer is what we get our K readings from. 
And interestingly, it just measures the central three millimeters, three to four millimeters of the cornea, right? So we know our cornea um, horizontally measures about 12 millimeters, right? And then vertically, maybe 10 and a half millimeters. So we're talking about, you know, the corneal cap, it's measuring about three millimeters, just this zone of it, and it's measuring the steepness. And it's finding out what the flattest meridian is and what the steepest meridian of the cornea is. The average keratometer is gonna measure from 36 to 52 diopters. Um, and, and what that's measuring is the power of the cornea, but also the steepness of the cornea. Uh, also remember, just helpful on your test, um, you can add a negative one auxiliary lens. It's gonna bring your case down to 30 diopters, or you could add in the, in the positive direction, a plus one and a quarter lens, and that's gonna bring you up, up nine more diopters, up to 61 diopters from 52 to 61. That's just a, a side note, neither here nor there. But we measure corneal astigmatism with K readings. And I'm just gonna give you an example of that. So let's say our K readings are 42 at 180, 4350 at 90. What this is telling us, and I'll do another drawing here, across our vertical meridian, our 90, the power of the cornea is 43 and a half diopters. At our 180, it's 42 diopters. So the difference between those two, our steepest and our flattest meridian, is going to be our corneal astigmatism. So a 4350 from a, you know, a 42 from a 4350, that's one and a half diopters of corneal astigmatism. If we just subtract those two values, that's the amount of toricity, that's the amount of cylinder value on ascribed to the cornea. Because remember, a keratometer or an ophthalmometer, you might hear it uh, referred to as, only measures corneal astigmatism. I'm gonna do one more example of that. So if we have, Uh, I'll read this out so it's actually clear. Okay. 44.50 at 70, and then 45 at 160. So our flattest meridian, our 44.50 is at 70, and we have 45 diopters of strength at the 160. So there is a difference of, what, a half a diopter between those two uh, meridians, the steepest and the flattest meridian. So there's a half a diopter of corneal astigmatism. And this brings up a great point now. Um, so if we're defining astigmatism, there is regular astigmatism and irregular astigmatism. Regular astigmatism means that the principal meridians are 90 degrees apart from one another. So this is measured by keratometry. Um, you can have with the rule, against the rule, oblique astigmatism. These are all regular astigmatism. But then you have irregular astigmatism. Irregular astigmatism cannot be corrected with a cylinder. We can't use a cylindrical eyeglass lens. We can't use a cylindrical contact lens to correct irregular astigmatism. Keratoconus is commonly associated with irregular astigmatism. You know, that's a thinning of the cornea and you have a, an oblate, like a protrusion of the cornea. Um, Pellucid marginal degeneration is kind of like keratoconus. It's a thinning of the anterior, um, uh, inferior part of the cornea, the lower part of the cornea. Um, you could have, uh, if trauma, something, you know, punctures the cornea, um, different disease can, ca can cause um, corneal thinning that gives you an irregular corneal shape. So another word to remember now, um, I'll, I'll write it on the board. It's a fun word. This is like bonus stuff right here. Ectasia. So it's even fun to say. Ectasia. So you'll hear corneal ectasia. That is thinning. So this word means thinning. So it's a thinning of the cornea. Um, 
The thinning of the cornea can create an irregular surface. So we can have irregular astigmatism, uh, which is like an ectasia of the cornea. You know, and for these, for these patients, you need to use some sort of a gas permeable lens. You know, a lens that's rigid enough that it's gonna create a tear film behind the lens and it's gonna provide a brand new optical surface. Um, because we're, it's not going to be able to, you can't use like a soft contact lens that drapes the cornea to correct for irregular astigmatism. So that's kind of the, the foundation of astigmatism. Here shortly in the next video series, I'm going to go over with the rule, against the rule, and oblique astigmatism, and just do some examples and some example prescriptions with that. Um, and then, you know, I'm going to do another uh, video after that on like compound myopic, simple myopic, you know, mixed astigmatism, those types of classifications. And you know, that way we could just bring it all together and you could really have a, a solid foundation of what is astigmatism. If this video has been helpful, I definitely encourage you to subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, um, and really just to keep watching it um, because you know, I'm truly, you know, a firm believer in, especially as opticians, contact lenses, it's, you know, it's really just um, the heart of the medical side of what we do. And just uh, the more that we are subject matter experts on this, the more that we'll be able to help our patients and provide good service to them. Because, you know, with just a surface uh, level knowledge of contact lenses, we're really not doing our patients any service. So just keep watching. If you're studying for your NCLE, um, trust me, just, just watch the videos and study your material. Uh, find a good comprehensive guide and just read through it. Um, there's a number of good resources out there. I know Carrie Wilson has a great book for NCLE, but if, if you're pairing the, the question and answers up with these videos, um, I know you'll be a success on the test. You know, these, these videos truly are just geared towards the theory behind the material and helping you to understand it better. If you're not necessarily like a textbook person and you weren't fortunate enough to go to opticianry school or, or be able to be lectured to, these are kind of um, hopefully supplementing and taking the place of that. So anyway, stay tuned and I'm gonna have another video in the series coming up shortly. Thank you.